Hi, everybody. This is Andy with True Blue Quilts, and we are here for another fun Friday, a short little chat about um, the quilting life. And uh, I am so glad to see you here today. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, you can drop a comment and let me know if you are able to join me live or if you're catching the replay. We love all of our quilting friends. You may notice the background looks a little bit different here today. I am on a quilt retreat, so this is my little bunk room that I'm sharing with some other lovely ladies and you know we've got our uh, little weekend uh, suitcases spread out here. It's a lovely lovely retreat center in the uh, rim country is what it's called here in Arizona. Uh, it's getting to be warm weather down in the Phoenix Valley, Valley of the Sun and I like to get out of town. A short, you know, hour and a half, two hour drive north gets us into some pine forest and it's just a beautiful weekend getaway. So that's what I'm doing. I met a lovely group of quilters online and um, we just all jumped in and made some new friends. So that's the best part about the quilting community is you have this instant bond over your love of fabric and we just we have we talk about kids we talk about food we talk about our adventures um, in life that's you know the cause of some of these gray hairs but it's just a wonderful weekend and uh, I'm working on a couple new quilt designs that I will be very excited to share with you over the coming weeks and um, of course, I forgot some stuff. So that's always a bummer uh, because I can picture exactly the spot on the counter where I left an important piece of one pattern. So that project will have to wait until I get home. But one of the fun things we do on retreat is some uh, trivia games and just, you know, little question and answer icebreaker type things. And I want to shout out to our leader, our quilt retreat organizer, Teresa. She has done a fabulous job and I am shamelessly stealing her ideas of games at the retreat for these Fun Friday episodes. So today I thought we'd dive into some quilt acronyms and see how uh, deep your quilting knowledge of all our vernacular goes. Um, I have to apologize. I don't have a prize for anyone today because I'm not at home. I'm not that organized, but I am saving all the bits and pieces of uh, extra fabric that I'm collecting here as I cut several new quilts out. And so you'll have some good stuff for prizes coming up. So every Friday at 8 a.m., either Facebook or YouTube, wherever you follow True Blue Quilts, join me for these fun Friday quilt chats and uh, games and just have some fun with your quilt, your online quilting friends. So uh, I'm going to drop some acronyms in the chat and we'll see if anyone can guess what they are. So um, the first one is uh, pretty obvious. A UFO. In the quilting world, this does take a little bit of a different meaning. Um, hi, Cindy. She's having a little bit of connection trouble. I, I totally understand. That's always an irritation when your internet goes a little bit wonky in the morning, especially when you're uh, trying to chat with some friends, but hope that all gets worked out. Um, I do have some non-quilting friends who tune in and they their ears kind of perk up when I start talking about UFOs. Uh, here in Phoenix, we have had several uh, unexplainable occurrences. They talk about the Phoenix lights uh, every year and um, 
so that's always funny uh, to hear about the UFOs. Um, I'm not discounting the possibility of alien life, but I haven't seen any of that in my sewing room, although I do have quite a few UFOs. So in the quilt world, UFO stands for unfinished object. And if you've been quilting more than, you know, your first project, you tend to accumulate quite a few UFOs because there's always that new and pretty stuff that you have to get started on. So um, UFOs are a common uh, a common theme um, among quilters and it's kind of a contest as to who has the most UFOs or who is doing the best job at tackling those UFOs. Uh, it's just uh, one of those funny things that insider vocabulary that every industry seems to have. So that is our first acronym. Um, here's another fun one that I don't, it always makes the list of uh, quilting acronyms, but I don't necessarily hear anybody talking about it as they chat. But sometimes you'll hear about pigs in the quilt world. And I live in the big city. We don't have any pigs running around. Um, they certainly are cute and you know, you can find all the fun little ceramic pigs, but that's not what we're talking about in the quilt, wor quilt world either. When a quilter talks about pigs, they're talking about a project in a grocery sack. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty good because I don't know about you, but I have many, many of those UFOs I mentioned stacked up and they do tend to sit if you get the fabric and the pattern and it just sits in that bag on the shelf or on the table until you can uh, find the time, come on a quilt retreat and get some of those pigs taken care of. So um, that's a fun uh acronym to start using. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm seeing some comments in the chat. Other people do have pigs. And the unfortunate thing is that some of the comments on my restream platform, that's the software I'm using to broadcast to you today, it doesn't register the individual people's names. So if uh, if something pops up to enter your name, go ahead and do that so that I can acknowledge you personally. It's fun to have these chats uh, and I'm not purposefully ignoring you. Uh, it's just an anonymous comment. So, um, And I do thank you for sharing my videos with your quilting friends. Ooh, Cindy, you read my mind. The next acronym is PhD. I have earned my PhD in quilting because I have a ton of projects half done. And again, you sense a theme with these uh, UFOs. You know, you, you start on something, you get distracted by the next thing, and it kind of snowballs. And yes, so uh, again, if you've been quilting for any length of time, you probably have earned your PhD as well. So good thought there, um, Cindy. Another fun quilting acronym that, um, especially if you like to shop and uh, get caught up in that frenzy of buying fabric and tools, you may hit SABLE. Has anyone heard the acronym SABLE when they are thinking about their quilting supplies? SABLE is a fun one and um, I, I may not have hit this generally just because I'm a little bit younger um, than some quilters, but my mom is starting to worry about sable. And that means stash acquisition beyond life expectancy. 
So uh, you've heard of uh, putting your quilt supplies into your will so that they go to a quilting friend, your guild, someone that, that understands the investment that those bins of fabric represents. Uh, so we have to be careful and monitor our sable so that we are not leaving future generations with <laughs> too much of a flood because I'm sure there will be new and wonderful uh, fabric coming out for uh, people to enjoy uh, once we are done and gone. Yes, it's sable is a uh, definite fear uh, or, you know, normal occurrence, I guess. So um, just be aware. It, it's fun to accumulate, but uh, just keep sewing, I guess, is, is the message there. Um, it, like I said, my mom's a little bit worried. She did a big de-stash last year because she downsized and had to give up her beautiful, you know, um, they built a little casita, an extra uh, garage that had kind of a mother-in-law suite at their old house. And so it was, oh gosh, I want to say it was like a 16 by 20 room that she was able to spread out. She had a big conference table so you could have several friends over all sewing at one time. And she just had several closets worth of fabric accumulated. And so of course, moving into a smaller house, she had to give up a lot. Um, Thank you, Cindy. I'm just a little bit distracted when that uh, latest comment came up. I, again, appreciate you sharing True Blue Quilts with your quilting friends, and we always welcome new people to our group. I'm excited to see what you do either with my patterns, with your own quilt designs. I love show and tell. So drop any pictures you know, what you're working on, put those in the comments as well. I'd love to see them. But I was talking about my mom and having all this fabric and she's just been working and working and working and making lots of charity quilts to try and just get rid of some of this fabric, put it to good use. And as we tend to notice with our scraps, they just multiply. You think, you know, oh my gosh, I've just made three quilts this week and yet I haven't made a dent in my my stash, that sable that's sitting there. Um, so it's a good, uh, it's good to just keep quilting and enjoy the process. So hopefully um, I keep reminding her it's not a, it, she's not being judged on her quilting performance. She should take some enjoyment from the process and not be so concerned about getting rid of fabric or having to make a certain number of quilts. So um, just, yeah, relax and enjoy it. That's kind of my basic philosophy for this uh, quilting journey is to find joy in the making. And I have one last um, quilt acronym for you. And then I have to go because they're making breakfast downstairs and it smells delicious. So um, one last acronym is WOMBAT, W-O-M-B-A-T. And as I said, my friend Teresa came up with some games for us to play at the retreat. And this was one that stumped a bunch of us. So I'll give you a few minutes to, or a few seconds, you know, the jeopardy theme song get that going in your head um, as you think about what wombat might mean in the quilting world and um, i'd love to know if you have any other acronyms that you use when you're talking about that that you know maybe your uh, husband or kids or family start hearing you talk about and they give you that weird look like what in the world does that mean um, hopefully a wombat does not appear very often in your quilting journey because it means, I'm typing here, a waste of money, batting, and time. And unfortunately, there are those projects that just 
it's a fail. You, you thought something would work and it really didn't. And there's no way to get those hours back. So um, I did hear someone once say, though, that even if it's ugly, a quilt is still functional. You know, you, you hate to think about a dog sleeping on your quilt, but you know what? Sometimes I don't want to look at it anymore. So sure, let me just donate that to the local animal shelter and uh, give give one of God's creatures a little bit of comfort there. <laughs> so uh, you can always find a place to use that even if you consider your project a wombat. So again, I hope that the wombat does not show up in your quilting room anytime soon. I wish everyone a fabulous fun day of quilting and I'd love to see what you're working on. Like I said, I have a couple new quilt designs that I am putting together here on my quilt retreat and um, I can't wait to share those with you. So stay tuned. Um, yeah, it, very few uh, quilts are unusable. Uh, they may not be to your aesthetic taste, but yes, uh, many charity groups will accept uh, whatever you have made and are, you know, give them with with love, made with love and given in that spirit of generosity. So there's always more fabric. So don't worry about screwing anything up. Just, uh, just, just have fun making quilts. I certainly am. I'm going to go sew the day away and I will be back next week with some more fun and games on our fun Friday. Take care, everybody.